Hello, today for review I've got Sivga SV021 new full-size headphones by the company that entered the market not so far ago, but they already released few really successful models. I did reviews of Sivga uh, Phoenix and their sister brand uh, Sandy Iva and uh, they recently announced two new models. One is ultra affordable Sivga SV021. If uh, I remember right, their code name is Robin, and also uh, Sandy Peacock. Uh, it's uh, a luxury, expensive model. I will review them too, but a bit later. But I decided to start with this affordable model, and they had uh, affordable models in the past. Uh, Phoenix was uh, pretty nice, but with this release, they probably decided to blow all competitors out of the water because it's the model that offers a uh, really high price to quality ratio starting with design and ending with sound this model offers a lot of good things price is about 170 dollars they were announced at 150 but current price on aliexpress is 170 i don't think it's a big changer but i will add links to the official site and AliExpress store in the description and meanwhile let's have a closer look. In terms of package it's traditional sized uh, full size headphones box, nice black cardboard with checker like pattern, looks uh, pretty fancy and just a silhouette of headphones, no information on the back side, almost no, so 50 mm uh, dynamic driver, 32 ohms of impedance, 105 decibels of sensitivity, 275 grams, 20 hertz, 20 kilohertz, so really good specs, uh, nice in almost every aspect. So let's open the box. Pretty opens pretty firmly. And inside we will get headphones themselves and storage pouch and stock cable so that's it of course it would be nice to see some kind of uh, case but of course for this price i think it just doesn't fit the price tire so you'll get this fabric pouch it's not superb for protection but it will be okay for storage to protect from scratches and in terms of the design and build quality, this model probably surpass everything in this price range and actually in even more affordable uh, segments. Of course, it here used the uh, Fox Leather, but it's super soft, it's super comfortable, and model itself uh, really lightweight and it distributes weight nicely. They are really comfortable in wearing not uh, super hard in terms of clamping but they uh, stay on head uh, pretty reliably so no plastic in the design all things are made of metal so really pleasant feels it has this clicker to adjust the size it so it will fit nicely even onto big heads you'll definitely find some positions that will suit and uh, one of the most stylish things here is of course uh, wooden cups it's great it it has nice finish nice polish and this uh, rose wood texture looks uh, amazing and overall you know uh, combination of colors and design is done with great taste they have also black version with black metal, black leather and uh, black uh, uh, finish on cups, also wooden, but it's the design for those who don't have time to smile. Ear pads are also really soft, really comfortable in wearing, they are pretty deep, so ears will fit nicely here, really comfortable and your ears won't touch the sides of this cup. And they have uh, normal sound isolation, not superb, but uh, of course ab above average and better than open back models. They have uh, some pressure relief holes here, but sound leakage isn't big, so it will be okay in the office. 
They can be probably weird on the street too, but for the street wearing, probably a lot of people will prefer the black version. Also, you'll get 6.3 millimeter adapter. Not the most useful accessory, but can be handy in some cases. And the uh, stock cable is just normal. I don't like cables in fabric coating. Uh, because it has a slight microphonic noise, but in this case it's it's not a big issue with headphones, so let me unwind it and untangle. Here as connectors used 2.5 mm jacks, probably the best choice in the affordable headphones world. A lot of companies use that, so it's easy to get some third party cable if you'd like. As you can hear, connectors are really clicky and the cable fit on place nicely. It's uh, pretty long, so it's enough for home usage. Probably for portable usage it will be a bit too long, but uh, I think if you'll decide to use them on the go, you, you'll get a shorter cable. But anyway, you can see that in terms of accessory set and package it's okay but uh, build quality is b below uh, oh sorry not below above expectations of course it's uh, overpassing all possible expectations and way better that than i could imagine even by photos and of course about the sound i gave them 48 hours of burn in but changes were on only du during first hour or two so no need in long extended burn in and let's have a player on the table i will use ibasso dx300 once again as it's pretty uncolored and universal good for testing good for those who like uncolored sound while i was burning them in i read some reviews over the internet and i don't know what's wrong with part of people who left uh, the feedback but i have a feeling that uh, they expected i don't know one thousand dollar performance or something like that because you know if we took price into account this model is maybe not perfect but really really good uh, because it offers uh, nice engaging v-shaped signature slightly on the warmer side of things but still pretty enjoyable and compensated by elevated treble so it's uh, nice tuning for non-audio files or for those who don't want to spend a lot of money but want to receive a fairly balanced sound not too monitoring not too thin or lightweight but some reviews uh, complained about lacking of resolution uh, i don't, don't remember what else but actually it's not the case it, in this price tire it's definitely one of the best sounding model I'm saying one of the best because I haven't heard a uh, lot of models and probably there are some better offers in terms of sound. But if we took also design into account, it will move it on top of the competition. So, bass is slightly elevated, uh, maybe not slightly, at, uh, bass boost is average. Not too big, not too small, so just average boost for the v-shaped sound to make everything more pleasant and more weighty it's not a bass head model not the model for those who need super weighty low frequencies or super punchy but at the same time they have good depths they don't make a particular accent on the deep bass or on the mid bass so low frequencies are balanced resolution is normal not super but normal like uh, four out of five uh, they have uh, pretty good texturing they play that small overtones also not superbly but uh, pretty on a pretty good level and uh, they we are pretty universal in terms of music uh, they are good with electronic music with deep bass or at least they good for me because many people like bass head models for such genres but i'm not a bass head so for me that amount of low frequencies is just perfect and they are nice with uh, acoustic instruments because they are representing that small nuances uh, pretty uh, correct of course they exaggerate acoustic instruments a little bit and moving them forward but at the same time not too much so sounding pretty okay and the uh, first example it's uh, 
Daft Punk, Get Lucky, pretty obvious example for the low frequencies because of punchy bass line, it sounds nice but at the same time not over dominating like it happens with some warmer tuned bassy headphones. And the second example track it's Casey Abrams, Cougar Town and uh, acoustic double bass here sounds really pleasant. Of course it's lacking some minor nuances comparing with more expensive models but in this tire it's pretty enjoyable experience, you'll get all that sense of uh, strings, wood resonance, not 100% natural, but still it's present and uh, played in a pretty fun way. Mids also have like uh, 4 out of 5 resolution, uh, it's not the model for those who want natural monitoring representation, for those who want the focus on the micro contrast, they have a bit of additional weight, but uh, not too much. At the same time this weight uh, makes instruments more full bodied as well as male vocals. And for female vocals they have a slight bump in the upper mids to compensate everything. So it's, you know, pretty safely tuned mid frequencies, enjoyable and not leaning towards some extremes like micro contrast or thin analytical sounding or vice versa, they are not over bloated, not super warm or muddy or something like that. Just a hint of uh, additional warmth that adds musicality. Imaginary stage is above average in width and about average in depth, so for the closed back headphones pretty normal results. Not stellar, but you know, pretty ok. So probably it's because of this uh, vent holes, but I'm not sure, it's just my assumption. And of course keep in mind that stage is subjective thing, so it depends. And uh, they are not super critical for the quality of records, uh, better material of course will give better results, but even something poorly recorded will be played in a pretty enjoyable manner. At the same time they are not uh, boosting uh, macro dynamics uh, too much, so not trying to st uh, stun you with some coloration. And uh, first example it's uh, King Crimson, Cadence and Cascade, just typical an example of uh, King Crimson creations of the early period, a lot of different instruments, tiny nuances and small things. Of course uh, this model loses a bit of naturalness for this track, but at the same time still sounds pretty enjoyable with nice and musical representation that is pretty fun. And the uh, second example it's Rush, Vapor Trails Remixed, Ghost Rider and uh, and I like uh, how guitars sound here, not too aggressive, but at the same time not too wailed, so pretty fair and balanced representation. And uh, treble. Treble here has a boost uh, and it has proper amount of uh, accent in the treble area, just to compensate low frequencies and give overall balanced uh, signature. Uh, of course you can use equalizer to reduce it or to boost a bit more, it's a matter of preferences. Extension is just average, but uh, I think it's okay for this price range. And uh, sometimes it's even done on purpose to reduce that uh, amount of uh, harshness and uh, to hide that uh, traces of mp3 compression that is typical for the upper treble. And, uh, in terms of attacks and decays and resolution it's just uh, normal dynamic drivers, not uh, super thin, super detailed like uh, planar magnetic headphones for example, but at the same time pretty clean without uh, excessive resonance. I'm not sure actually how thick uh, this wood is because I have read some complaints that uh, cups feels uh, like fox wood. I didn't scratch them, but uh, you know, my assumption here is that uh, wooden cups play their role in uh, balancing the overall signature, because usually cheap uh, plastic caps uh, sometimes cause excessive resonance and uh, sounding uh, too harsh in the treble area, but it's not that case. If you are sensitive for the high frequencies, maybe it's not a perfect model for you, you need to listen it before buying. But in general treble tuning here is normal, it's comfortable for me and it's not the comfortable in way that uh, treble is reduced and missing. It's comfortable meaning that it's uh, organic and fitting the overall signature, not too much, not too less. 
of course, uh, don't expect some rich layering or small overtone saturation, but uh, basic overtones played nicely and treble sounds well balanced. And uh, as an example for the treble, first track is CC Coletti, You Shook Me. Uh, it's from the Rock Reimagined and uh, record quality is great and the guitar here has a lot of, of high pitched overtones and of course this headphones doesn't play it 100% correct, but uh, it's still uh, they are at least present and uh, making everything sound more airy and saturated. And another pretty obvious example, it's uh, Whiplash soundtrack, great movie, great soundtrack, and it's the version of uh, Whiplash from this uh, movie, and uh, it's all about the percussions, a lot of them, and they sounding also not perfect, but uh, pretty nice. In terms of pairings, it doesn't require something super powerful, you can even use it with your smartphone, but in case of smartphones, of course, it's better to get some digital tonal converter or at least entry level player up to middle segment, they have potential of growth. Probably in future we'll see more modifications and changes in this model because, for example, you can easily uh, disconnect the ear pad, they have that plastic uh, hooks, so it it's easily replaceable, so uh, it encourages the experiments with third-party ear pads, for example, some damping attempt and so on and so forth. But of course, I'm talking about the stock version of the sound. And uh, to be honest, I don't see much sense in speaking about the compressions because you know I didn't hear many models in this segment uh, because uh, I don't. Remember, for example, uh, Siren from the uh, Centrons, it's a bit more monitoring, a bit more focused on the micro contrast and sounding less uh, weighty than this one. And uh, actually the closest competitor of this model that I've heard, it's Meza 99 Classics and Neo. They have slightly more resolution on the mid frequencies, but difference isn't big. And also this model has a bit less bass, sounding uh, slightly more balanced to my ears, because Meza tuning is a bit more bassy. And uh, cheaper models like Tuckstar or Superlux, of course, they are inferior to this model, so it's really good competitor in this segment, and uh, Sivga created really good model that will be discussed, that will be bought, and I really hope that it will get the attention it uh, it worth. So, if you're looking for some affordable model with stylish design and if you like slightly warmer signature and you need something closed back, it's definitely worth uh, trying, listening and worth your uh, attention. Thank you for your attention, thank you for listening and have a nice day.